Good morning and welcome to Ensemble Conversations with me, Mark Kilmurray, Artistic Director of the Ensemble Theatre. Thank you so much for all your texts and your messages and your support. It's very good of you to be donating tickets and supporting us during this time. I can't wait until we're all back in a foyer sometime soon. My special guests this morning are the actors and writers Brittany Shipway and Sam O'Sullivan. Good morning both. Hello, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> Good morning, good. Mark. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Now, you both act and write, and that's what I'm interested in talking about this morning. Um, Brittany, with your background, which is a really fantastic background, I hope you talk a little bit about that. Where did the writing instinct come from? Was it because you're an actor you decided to write, or did you always want to write? I always wanted to write, but I was always afraid. <laughs> I was waiting for permission to write, I think, but I, I figured out last year during COVID that I was probably the only per person who could give myself permission, so <laughs> that's how it started. Yes, right. Yes, and as a proud Gumbayangera woman and also Turkish background, and you studied at Lee Strasberg Institute in uh, New York and at NIDA, did, that was all part of your creativity, so writing was, a, was another step uh, to do what you love, I suppose. It's all storytelling at the end of the day, and Gumbangi culture in particular has such a rich history in storytelling. I think it's the next yep. natural step. And it all informs yes. each other as well. I, I find that writing dialogue is really wonderful as an actor. I think that informs the way I write in scenes as well. So um, I definitely read out my own scene work and do some crazy, crazy acting work at my desk. <laughs> So do you uh, you improvise every role? Oh, well, sometimes. It's good to hear what it sounds like, but you, you really need other actors to come and bring it to life, but I, I definitely have done that. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> yes, and it's really interesting you said giving you a permission to write. That's really an interesting way of looking at it because we can write, but we can keep things in our drawer for years. Uh, but then when someone says, hey, actually, I want to read this, it just gives you the confidence to do more with it. Oh, that's absolutely the key there. The first script that I wrote, I think a letter for Molly was 30 pages long. I sent it to a friend and she said, you need to keep going with this. And so I yep. really pulled out a, a first draft in a week and then kept working on it and kept working on it. And I, I think that's probably the, the biggest thing when, you, when you're starting writing, you have to acknowledge and be at peace with the fact your first draft is probably going to be crap <laughs> but it's only going to get better if you keep working on it and sharing it you have to share it sam you graduated from nida and has been a very, had a very busy time as an actor and we've worked together on uh, a few projects and now you're writing uh, quite a bit and, and also a published uh, writer too again for you same question where did the writing come from did you always want to do it I always did it when I'm, it was actually my grandfather. Uh, I took to writing later in life. Um, he wrote his memoirs and would write poetry uh, and he always really encouraged it. And so uh, when I was very young, I'd write a lot of short stories, not a lot of, not a lot of plays. It wasn't until I got into acting later. And then um, when I decided, oh, I, I really enjoy this. I really enjoy writing dialogue, a, a very similar journey to Britney's. It was actually at drama school and we were given the option when we studied Chekhov uh, to write our, our own translations if we wanted to, based on the sort wow. of literal translation um, that the teacher gave us. Uh, and I think I was probably the only student who actually took them up on the offer. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I translated my own scene um, from, from The Seagull. Uh, which wow. um, which I've really enjoyed and really enjoy putting to get, putting it together and um, uh, yeah was sort of encouraged by a few of the teachers to um, keep kind of pursuing that. It's interesting. It's a sort of instinct that you can do it, I guess. Uh, I, I think it helps having the acting background. I think I think Brittany would probably agree that. Um, as actors slash writers, we we would like to think that we write plays that actors would enjoy being in, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, indeed, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, now, um, Brittany, you recently had great acclaim as a performance in chess. Once you're in a run like chess, which is very 
demanding in lots of other ways. Do you find that you're scribbling and writing during the run in the dressing room or or can your brain not cope with uh, two things at once? Oh, I love mayhem. That's how it works at <laughs> first, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. In the dressing room, I was I had my little flashcards ready to go where I was reframing different stories that I was writing and, and working on the structure of it all. Uh, yeah, I, I remember being in quarantine in Perth when when we went there for chess and I was writing every day before we went and performed. It's, it's great. And I, I think that when you go out and you perform at night, sometimes it reminds you what medium you're writing for and the people you're writing for. So it, it helps. And Sam, how about you? Can you write in mayhem or do you need to be huddled away in an isolated alcove with everyone going shh, shh, shh? No, I, I, I need a little bit of solitude and a little bit of quiet. Um, but, I, but I do <laughs> uh, enjoy writing that first draft very quickly, uh, like Brittany also said. Um, it's, it's actually interesting. The, my first full-length play, The Block Universe, um, had a, you know another similar kind of parallel to what Brittany just said in that it was sort of 30 pages long. You, you write it, you, you stick it in a drawer. I like to think it sort of ferments while it's in there. <laughs> um, and it actually took a, a friend... A, I actually don't know how he got his hands on it because I showed it to a, to a few uh, people, but then Dom Mercer um, got his hands on it and was like, I, I think we need to do this. And it was three years from first draft to, to first production. Um, but it, it does take a lot of encouragement. And it does kind of having that kind of one person who backs you and sees something through to, um, to the first production is kind of very important. Um, I know your yes. question was about, you know, solitude and uh, I kind of strayed from That's that, right. but um, yeah. <laughs> I, I find that I, when I do any, any writing, which I have done over the years, the, the TV can be on, my son can be doing something on Xbox and I, I find I can sort of, you could sort of block it out and, and be connected with that, with the words on the page. And, and also writing here at the theatre in the office in the in lunchtime while other things are going on. I quite like that chaos, but sometimes I need just classical music and nobody else around, you know. Oh no, that's um, too chaotic for me. That sounds like a true parent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how much, we sort of answered the question, but Brittany, how much does uh, uh, being a performer help the written word? When you say you sort of, it reminds you of being in the environment, I guess that when you're writing a play, you, you know that world so well. I think more than anything, being an audience member informs writing more than more than being an actor, mm. because I find myself gravitating towards generational stories and looking at links. What can we learn from the past to enhance the future? And I also find that I gravitate towards stories that I wish I could see as opposed to characters yes. I wish I could play. Um, so it's probably a yes. little bit, uh, uh, the lens moves back a little bit further, I think, when it comes to writing rather than just acting. Although as an actor, particularly with a background in musical theater and singing and country music's quite big in my family, a lot of Tyler Pride, um, that sort of permeates throughout the writing as well. That music just tends to creep in in whatever I do <laughs> as much as I try yes. to shun it. Uh, so that's yes. it's like a soundtrack, a soundtrack to keep you going. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Sam, Sam, does it uh, help you? Just uh, you sort of answer the question, but being in the theatre helps you when you're constructing a play. Yeah, and s exposing yourself to as many different styles of storytelling as you can, like not only um, theater, styles of theatre, but also different films and documentaries. And I think. Um, curiosity is is you know a really important part of being a writer you don't know where that where that first initial spark is going to come from for for any story so i think you've just you've got to be mindful of what you consume because we have so much different um content at our fingertips um so much these days you know uh, but if you're you've got to you know you've got to put good stuff in and and hopefully hope that good stuff comes out for me, whenever I uh, have a little idea about something, it comes from usually just a hunch or a physical vis vision almost of something happening on stage. 
uh, for instance, with Outdated that was on earlier this year, it was someone crossing their legs and knocking a table of drinks over. And from there, I thought, oh, that could be interesting if that was on a blind date. How embarrassing would that be? And it sort of snowballed from there. Where, where does, without it being a detrite, where do your ideas come from? But Brittany, where do your ideas come from? <laughs> uh, with, some, with some plays or some stories, it's, uh, I look at the people around me for sure. And I'm definitely, I, I agree with Sam, I have a curiosity about people and cultures I don't understand in particular. Um, some of my writing, I, I find my way in because I'm curious to learn about my Gulbangi culture, for example. And um, mm. yeah, I guess that's that's how I started writing because I wanted to know more. I, I'd seen little snippets in my family of uh, language or language being lost and I decided to learn it. And then as I was learning it, I thought, God, there's something really wonderful here that we're not exploring and that I haven't seen on stage before. And so that sort of translates to the show that you're at. Yes, of course, yes. And uh, Sam, for you where, do you, where do your first hunches come from for an idea? I'm a really big fan of actually writing to a brief or, or writing to a genre um, or... Yep something playing with structure in 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 some kind of way i kind of find an, an initial spark will just come if i can just put one post in the ground to do with one of those things um it it, it, it exists in this kind of uh, genre or this is my midpoint it's a story and it's and it's and this is what's going to happen in the middle or this is what's going to happen at the end uh hmm. once you first put one peg in the ground, then you start making decisions and the kind of huge, vast landscape of, oh my God, I can talk about anything, which is kind of, which is kind mm. of um, really imposing and sort of to the point where you atrophy and you don't say anything at all. Once you've made <laughs> that sort of I initial crucial one decision, then things, you can just start taking one step at a time and, and kind of let the story surprise you, kind of let the dis different decisions and the different, um, solves you you come up with for, for different problems let them kind of yeah let them kind of surprise you and and let the actor in you take over sometimes and improvise certain things as we've talked about um but yeah structure and genre and and yeah funnily enough as as you know creatively stifling as it as it might sound um a brief you know a, mm. it, it, this is a show for kids or this is a show about poetry mm. or this is a science fiction on stage or, or whatever it is um it's just about that yeah. initial decision yeah. block the universe i'm still trying to work out i saw it whenever it was three or four years ago and i think okay <laughs> so hold on a minute they went through the portal <laughs> but it was it didn't matter and that's the 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 brilliance of it i think that that if it's mm. timey-wimey science thing it doesn't really matter if you don't quite quite get it i think sometimes like watching the west wing you don't know what the hell they're talking about but it doesn't <laughs> matter it's, it's the it's the way it's done how do you see Brittany? how do you see the state of new writing for the theater now what what are the what are the challenges that we're up against a very small question uh <laughs> <I think laughs> yes sorry about that <laughs> no, it's just about inviting people to come in I, I, it's really scary to know where to start, um, what to mm. do, but I would just encourage writers to, to start writing. Um, just give it a whirl, particularly with First Nations writers. I'm working on a, a First Stories Festival at the moment down in Melbourne uh, with applicants where even if you struggle writing, if you have literacy problems, it's totally fine. We can transcribe that. You're innate Great. storytellers. Just go for what what's within you and, and the rest will come. There's actually no real formula. I never trained to write, it, but my <clears> life informs the way that I do write and the stories that I tell. And it's empowering to know that other people want to listen to those stories. So, yeah, I, I think you've just got to start and not worry about fitting into the mould. And it's great to see First Nations stories and stories from different cultures on our stages more and more. It's, that's a, a development that I think is just terrific. Oh, absolutely. So many people say that we don't have new stories, but oh, there's new yeah. stories everywhere. We just haven't been opening yeah. our ears. And I, I think that's it's really right. exciting. And I think as long as it's in the spirit of collaboration amongst each other, that's really important. We really need to build a community that supports each other and um, and we can work with each other. I think that's really exciting for me.
Yes, absolutely. What improvements, Sam, do you think there can be for, for writers? I know you're actors as well, which which is in some cases can be a great thing. You can be employed in one one area when and not in another. Or in other cases, it can be you're not employed in either area sometimes, as I know, as an actor, writer or director. <laughs> but Sam, what, what improvements do you think there can be for, for, for writers? Oh, being able to see your work put on, even if it's, um, you know, it doesn't have to make it to a, to a full production, but having avenues to, to have readings of your plays, um, seeing, your, seeing professional actors, you know, up on stage, if it's a reading or a full production, you, you get better by doing and you get better, you learn from your mistakes and you learn from experience. Um, and I think so many writers, I think they're, they're, so many people, yeah, might have that passion to sit down and tell a story and write a play. Um, but then there's so many plays in drawers that never get past um, past that you know initial that first draft because people don't really have the avenues to do something um, with them. You know, I mm. I have been very involved in in independent theatre and even I nearly stuffed my first play in a in a drawer <laughs> and and forgot about it and took a friend of mine yeah. to be like, hey, we, we you got to do this. Um, mm. So yeah, more more independent spaces and and more opportunities to see their work produced, I think, would be would be a start. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, um, Brittany, just for you uh, quickly, what about uh, future work? Anything that you can talk about or tell us uh, at the moment? Well, I have a letter for Molly, which is a play I wrote last year, which. Uh, yeah. is about four generations of women uh, that are loosely based off the women in my family. And I'm also writing a musical, uh, but I'd like to call it a, a song circle or a song line. It's called Yellow Rock, and it's about going home to a, a place in Yoranga, which is part of, uh, it's on Gumbengi country, I'm trying to integrate dreaming stories and really celebrate culture. Uh, I think so mm. often uh, Aboriginal storytelling on our stages look at the stolen generation um, from then on and the effects of that. But we have 65,000 years worth of culture that we can talk about before. And that, that stuff's great. <laughs> Let's look at that for once. So, uh, I'm, and I want to yes. encourage uh, young kids to get involved in theatre and culture. And, and maybe if I get them excited and I tell positive stories, uh, they can really, yeah, come to the table and sit in the audience. Yes, fabulous. And you write lyrics too, so that must be a great part of um, being able to to uh, to put together such a project. That's the easiest bit, honestly. The music yeah. just sort of comes <laughs> out, and it's the story. It's pretty amazing writing yeah. a musical. How much more structure you need? It's mm. impossible. It's so impossible. Give me longer lockdown. <laughs> I need. I need it. That's right. <laughs> Another six months. And uh, Sam, for you, future work that you can talk about. Uh, future work that I can talk about. Uh, I've been adapting Charlie Pilgrim, uh, which is my kids show that I wrote for ATYP. Um, I, I'm constantly in the process of adapting that for screen, which is um, which is a really right. fun process and a, and a really um, great challenge. Uh, yeah, I've re really been enjoying that. And I, I'm working on, on my next play. Um, have to be careful about uh, what I say, but uh, it's um, <laughs> it, I'm really enjoying kind of uh, meeting this uh, family who are coming together for a, uh, a traditional holiday um, at a time when we're kind of all asking why we're holding on to tradition and we're all looking to the future. I think none of us have really got through the past couple of years unscathed and it's kind of shaken a little bit of our our, our belief system and the way we look at the past and, and the way that um, where we're going kind of uh, as, as, a, as a species really um, and how we're going to survive into the future. I'll leave it there, yeah. I think. That's, yeah, yes, big ideal, but uh, very good, brilliant. Sounds fantastic. Uh, Brittany and Sam, so good to talk to you this morning. Thank you for taking time to talk to us and all the best with all of your future endeavours. I look forward to seeing you in a foyer and in a theatre very soon nearby, uh, sooner than we we think, but I understand the breathing space of COVID. I, I think that's, that's great to write, <laughs> to be creative. It's been wonderful, but uh, it'd be really great to see you both again very soon. And again, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Mark.
That was Brittany Shipway and Sam O'Sullivan talking to us this morning. Thank you so much for watching again. Thank you for your support. It's so good to know that you're out there and it's so good to sort of have a, a penciled in date for when we might be opening, which will be coming up soon. We'll let you know. Just check all our social media for our details. We'll have another special guest next time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your feedback. Keep safe. Keep vaccinated. Bye.